the whole system that's sexist as hell. So my name is B. Eilink. I am 59 years old. I came to Vancouver um, in 2008 um, after 10 years international work. I'm originally from the Netherlands and I'm now in Vancouver on the unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, the Slavitooth, the Musqueam and the uh, Squamish people. Um, and since 2011 I have my own company. I invented a three-wheeled walking bike and I have that company ever since. Um, well, I had a hysterectomy when I was, was 37. Quite funny story, actually. I was in Kosovo. I've been 10 years in international work. And I was in Kosovo um, when I was 36, 37. And I had problems pooing. And there was incredible pain, and it took days, and it, it was not pretty. And so one day I went to the field hospital <laughs> and a German doctor with a camouflage um, uh, uniform, he was doing a um, sound uh, echo. What do you call that? A, a sound? Um, ultrasound. ultrasound. Thank you. Yes. So he did an ultrasound and he said, well, I'm not a gynecologist, but I do think it's that kind of problem. So they repatriated me to the Netherlands. Within 24 hours, I was having a hysterectomy. Um, because they found um, big, um, how do you call those things? Anyway, in the Netherlands we call them flea, the, um, um, fibroids. Yeah, yeah, no, no, they're, they're good. We call them meat trees, meat trees. They they grow. <laughs> so I had one and a half kilo of them in my uterus and on top of my uterus, completely grown in with my intestines and my poop couldn't get through. So anyway, they took out one and a half kilos plus my whole uterus. They left my um, ovaries um, and three and a half weeks later, I was on the rough roads in Afghanistan, happier than a clam. Happy as a clam because try and find tampons in Afghanistan. <laughs> Post Taliban, so that didn't work. <laughs> so I was super happy um, that I had my hysterectomy. And my first hot flesh was in the kitchen in an old fort in Kabul in Afghanistan in, when I was 45. <laughs> and that was very like, oh my God, this is something else. This is a hot flesh. It was like something from inside trying to explode and everything just went on overdrive, heart rate and everything. I was like, oh, this, is, this must be a hot flesh because this feels different than anything else. But it did mean that later on in time, after I had my first um, hot flash, and then my menopause started kicking in. Um, what I never knew and what they don't tell you is when you've got a surgical menopause, it's actually a little bit more extreme because I still had my um, ovaries. Um, so it was trying to do something, but there was no flow because the uterus, uterus was gone. And that resulted in 10 years menopause that was so extreme that when I had colleagues in the first years here in, Af in, um, in Canada, I, <laughs> I told them, like, if I say go, like if they would come to me for a question, if I say go away, please go away, don't, don't, don't argue with me because I will rip your head off. I had such horrific mood changes. Um, the most extreme thing that I, that I remember, <laughs> I was driving on Granville Street down from Richmond where I lived at that time um, and I was driving down and there was a car that just cut in front of me and too fast and then stopped on the brake and I stepped on the brake and I just hit their bumper. Not my fault because he just scoot in front of me. And then he sort of forced me to go on the, on the side, in the side road <laughs> to, um, uh, to see what the damage was that he said I did. And I, I don't... You know, I don't know what happened five minutes later, but really, that's what happens. I yelled at him. I, 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 don't, I totally flipped out on the guy. And then later when I was back in my car and I ripped out his phone because he wanted to make a picture of my number plate and I completely freaked at him. It's literally like you've got those things during your menopause and then after five minutes, like, 
I don't know what happened. You really don't, but you go out of your mind. And it's very, <laughs> it's detrimental for a lot of things. I was trying to have a relation in that time. She had a menopause as well, also surgical. Yeah, that relationship didn't go well because we had things like, what the hell just happened? Seriously, it was unbelievable. Yeah, in hindsight, it's funny because you've got funny stories, but it was not funny. It was painful and, and, and dangerous because I don't know if I flip at somebody and literally rip their throat off. You know, it, it, was, it scared the crap out of me. That's how big the mood swings were. The only thing that helped later on, I found um, uh, an acupuncturist in Richmond who was specialized on menopause and um, menstrual pains. And she set um, needles and actually took away a lot of the pain and the symptoms of getting <laughs> those, those nasty mood swings. Yeah, well, since I was about 15 or 16 or something before my breast started growing and I was like, yes, they skipped me, yes. Because that never felt like a good thing to me. Um, and so for 40 years, my breasts have been in my way. They were always causing me to try and hunch over, not to show myself, etc. And, <laughs> and then uh, it's so nasty, really, because after a menopause, where you will not feed children anymore, they should just shrivel up and become nothing because they're useless at that time, right? But no, they started growing, and the left one started growing harder than the right one. And I was like, I'm not gonna be that woman with, you know, this, this ship coming into the room kind of thing. Not gonna happen. So they were already um, horrific to me my whole life. And so finally, because there's no language. I didn't have cancer. I didn't have breast cancer that would allow you to take, take them off. And then I didn't, want to transition into a man. I'm a woman, I'm just not fond of my breasts. So there's no language for that. So for 40 years, I always wanted to get rid of them, had vivid dreams about chopping them off and all that stuff, and it was never possible. And when they started growing, I was like, that's not gonna happen. So I finally took all my courage and went into a walk-in clinic and found a doctor and he said, it's been a while, isn't it? And I just wept, I just absolutely wept. And he was like, let's, let's get this going. And the first plastic surgeon only did breast enlargements. It was during the pandemic, it was a bit problematic because <laughs> he couldn't just get into any clinic. The second one was a plastic surgeon who said, um, I think it's an insult to a woman's body to remove them without a reason. Right? Because the system is a little bit sexist, just a little bit. And then... Finally, I ended up with a plastic surgeon and he said, you know, if your breasts are larger than a D plus, we can get a breast reduction. And I was like, yeah, I don't want a breast reduction. He said, bear with me. How large are your breasts? And I was like, I don't know, because I really had no idea. And he looked and he said, minimum D plus. And I was like, oh, this guy wants to work with me. So he said, let's get that going. Let's get that approved. And once you're on my table, I'll do whatever the fuck makes you happy. So, so he did. He did a double radical mastectomy based on a breast reduction that was allowed in the medical system because there's no language for what I felt. You can't do that in the medical because it's an insult to one's body to re remove them without a reason, even though it had just been very detrimental for me over 40 years. And to just illustrate how sexist the system is, the medical system and doctors, male doctors, probably female doctors as well, because the whole system is sexist. Um, when I had my hysterectomy, I had agreed to cut vertically. That was all in the documents. He was gonna cut vertically, because I didn't want my meridians to be cut through. And when I woke up, it was like there, and he said, well, you know, I decided it would look better on the bikini line. But he had decided that as I was under, on the surgical table, without my consent, there's nothing you can do because it's done. But that's how sexist the system is. It's, it's horrific. So it's always been a lonely road to do that because women don't know where to turn to.
just live in my own body. I had my surgery one and a half years ago. I finally have my body back before I lost my innocence, I always say. Like when I was young, I could climb up trees and do whatever I wanted to do. And the moment you get your external identifiers as a woman, all of a sudden you need to be according to that and you can't do that anymore. And you lose your innocence as a kid that is free. I'm a free kid and again, and I'm living my free life and F the rest. So that's, that's what I'm doing. Excellent. And the older you get, the less you give a shit about what people think of you. So <laughs> it's so good. That's the best part, right? right? But it's horrible that you have to, I'm nearly 60 now. That you you got to be 60 to get, to shed all the stuff that's been put on you as the system wants you to be a woman or all that stuff. It's, it's limiting. Why? Because it makes money somewhere. Like, I don't know. It's. But yeah, I've got my innocent body back again and I feel like a seven-year-old boy. Okay. And I'm a woman. Get used to that a woman can be and look like this too. I'm not this gender whatever stuff like, no. Yeah. I'm me, I'm born with female genitalia, I'm a woman. And the world needs to get used to that a woman can look like this. Thanks for watching this episode. For more menopause stories like this, subscribe below. And don't forget to click the bell so you are notified when we drop a new episode. Did you connect with this story? Let us know by adding your comment and by sharing and liking it. Shared storytelling helps us learn what's happening to our bodies and reminds us we are not alone.